Receiving incoming transmission. Comlink established. Hey, what's up, man? Got your refugees tucked in nice and tight. Provide you can sidestep any more surprises from our Confederate friends and we can keep them away from those critters. They should have an easy time. Priority alert. Backwater station under attack by unknown alien organisms. Distress beacon activated at 0658. Alerting Confederate headquarters on Tarsonis. Stand by for incoming transmission. We've already received the distress beacon from Backwater and we'll take care of it. You just sit tight. You'll be notified if there's anything we think you need to know. Damn. Listen, if we wait for Confederate reinforcements, that station's dust. I'll head out there now and do what I can. You send in some militia, and we'll save those folks. Trust me. Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play StarCraft. This is the second video of the evening because this mission is slightly Bad to see longer. You boys. Time to kick some serious butt. Yes indeed, Jim. It will be time to kick some serious bot soon. But how about you just do your thing and throw some spider mines down here? I'm just doing this to block the entrance for a little bit, just to make sure that we are okay. We start off with not much, so... Well, we've got a refinery, I suppose, so we should be okay. Use Jimmy to have a look around. To be honest, there's not really, there's no need for me being as cautious as I am. But Jimmy doing the uh, thing that he's well known for, which is defying the Confederacy. He's never really been one much for following orders, so he is just doing what Jimmy doing what Jimmy does basically. And I don't really have much need. You can see I can build fire bats. They are another infantry unit like the marine, except unlike a marine, fire bats don't really have a ranged attack. Uh, they have a short range flamethrower, and that does way over twice as much damage as the marine attack. But obviously, they can't attack things with flat that fly, and they also have to get up close and personal, so they're a little bit vulnerable to range units. I'm not saying they're bad by any stretch of the imagination, it's just that the marines just tend to... Uh, I tend to stick a lot more to marines because I think they're a little bit more versatile, but uh, fire bats are definitely fine. We also get access to the engineering bay in this mission, which will allow us to upgrade our units. So what I haven't done so far, I haven't really talked much about the storyline of StarCraft as we get into it. Um, initially the Terrans were in the Kapolu sector, which is where we are here. Uh, they arrived here, they've colonised here. Another race here called the Protoss um, are indigenous, shall we say, to this area of the galaxy, but they tend to keep themselves themselves, stay a little bit in the shadows. Um, they're a very old race, an ancient race that were created by an even older race called the Zalnaga as an experiment into trying to create the perfect species. And the Protoss has what are known as purity of form. Uh, sorry, purity, yeah, purity of form is what the uh, Protoss have. Uh, very highly psychically gifted just a very uh, very powerful race but they're dwindling in population uh, so they're not very numerous but they're very highly advanced technologically and they are uh, you know, they have very powerful uh, psionic abilities the other race that have recently come into the sector are the Zerg who are not yet known but I think it was known at this time by the Protoss that the Zerg were also connect, uh, created by the Zalnaga. Uh, now, the Zalnaga, when they created the Zerg, created them with purity of essence rather than purity of form. And the hope was eventually to have the Protoss and the Zerg unite peacefully and uh, end up with a perfect being which has purity of form and essence. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to go too much into StarCraft 2 storyline because that's a bit of a retcon, but basically what happened was that uh, 
The Zerg Overmind, which was created to control the swarm, became self-aware, realized the Zelnaga were in orbit, and attacked and destroyed the vast uh, majority of the Zelnaga race. So the Zelnaga pretty much don't exist in the, uh, this period, or they've been destroyed by the Zerg, and the Zerg are moving in on the Protoss at this point. And the Protoss idea of how to deal with it, at least deal with the Zerg, is basically along the lines of kill it with fire. That's basically the uh, Protoss Avenue to it. They just literally burn any world that the uh, Zerg are found on currently. Although uh, there are those amongst the Protoss who don't believe that that's a good idea, but that's going way down the line. So that's where we find ourselves at the moment. The Terrans are ruled by the Confederacy, which is a militaristic organization. They're not exactly uh, nice people, but then again, when you're in a sort of backwater area of space with all manner of potentially hostile aliens around you, sometimes you need a strong um, leadership to see you through that. But they're certainly not above using dirty-handed tactics, and you see that with a lot of the units that the... Uh, Terrans use, especially the Ghost, which we'll see later. Get in there with Marines at this point. I am going to plonk down an Academy at some point, just so that I can make Firebats, because Firebat... Firebats actually tend to be quite decent when you get into a close-range punch-up with the Zerg. Uh, they're not so great against a ton of flying units, but when, when you get in close-range punch-ups, there's not much that actually does more damage than Firebats. And additionally, their attack does have a little bit of splash damage going on for it, so... Uh, it's uh, it's kind of rare to see a melee attack or melee attack that has splash damage, but the Firebats manage to uh, accomplish it. Doing my best not to... And this is the advantage of not queuing stuff up. You can see my money is low, but I'm only producing one unit at a time. But that's, uh, you know, that's not bad. So we're going to do a little bit of spreading out here. I've taken 11 Marines and Rainer, and uh, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, so we're going to go up this ramp. Uh, levels or height level does matter in StarCraft. Ew, what's that? Rain is actually uh, correct there. The ground is pretty much alive. That's creep. Uh, the Zerg are only able to build on creep. Uh, it's basically what... Everything about the Zerg is organic and creep is what... Uh, functions as a way to uh, functions as nutrition really now you've seen me queuing up units here I do do that you're going to have to get used to it I'm afraid but we found some Terran structures you'll see me often queuing units when I'm getting involved in combat we've been holed up in these bunkers for days hiding from the Zerg this should be good these things have been out here a while but they could be pretty useful I got too used to moving with the attack command then and ended up attacking the uh, barracks. But we got the academy anyway, we don't actually have to build it. And there's our firebats. Now bunkers are extremely useful. Um, what you can do is you can put units in the bunker and they'll be protected from any damage. And once you've managed to, once you have protected everything, uh, they will fire out of the bunker. So it's a nice stat. It's a good static defense. Uh, usually, I tend to put either four marines or three marines and a firebat into a bunker. Uh, the firebats for when things get up close and personal, because things will inevitably get on top of your bunkers. Uh, so at this point you'll realize that I haven't yet taken control of that command center and in fact things do cut things will go all the way back to my other command center as you can see here and finally I take it over there so they will start coming back now but uh, yeah that that was a little bit awkward Come back, don't run away. 
And here's the Academy. You can research U-238 shells, which increase a Marine's range, which is very useful. And you can also research uh, stim packs. So all's going quite nicely there. I will be abandoning this base shortly. And there's one thing that Terran buildings can do, which is incredibly useful. You can actually lift them up and drop them back down again. And this is all about the this is all about the adaptability of the Terrans as a race. Uh, they can lift up and put their buildings back down. They can also build add-ons to their buildings, which will allow you to uh, which allow you to do extra things. I'm building the Comsat station for the uh, for the Terrans here, which is basically a big scan. Uh, it also sees things which are hidden, so it'll see Zerg units that are burrowed, units that are cloaked, which you'll see earlier, uh, later on. Generally, you're going to use this an awful lot until you get super late game. Uh, when you get super late game, you might start using another building. But Comsat Station is where you're going to go initially because those scans are going to be mega useful. So I've got a lot of SCVs mining dem minerals at the moment, so I think we're doing okay. And I'm now producing out of two barracks, so I'm going to need to get my... Uh, in fact, I'm going to start producing out of three barracks. I'm just going to uh, float my other barracks over here so that I'm not uh, micromanaging two bases at once. I don't need to float the eBay over because that will be used very shortly. And I'll research stim packs as well while I'm here. I think that most players would go for stim pack first. I tend to go for the longer range shells first. It really is a point. You know, if you're playing multiplayer, you will go stim pack first, I would imagine, because you're looking to get a crippling blow in early. Um, but again, the single player campaign really doesn't involve. You know, it, do it doesn't really involve you. Um, yes. going absolutely mental with uh, trying to destroy your opponent's supply line because their supply lines are already there. So I'm just building up a force of marines and firebats. There we go. Now I've got two groups of marines and firebats. So we're going to head off and start burning down the zerg. This force should be more than enough for what we're up against. Fortunately, what I should do is send my group with the firebats in first because the firebats need to get close. And as you can see, because of the marines' increased range here, they're actually blocking the firebats off, which makes things a little bit awkward. So that's one group down. I'm not going to bother using stim packs yet. There's not really any point. And there's the introduction to the Zerg Hydralisk, and there's the Firebat getting up close and personal. They do quite a significant amount of damage, I have to say. Here come more Zerglings. Ramps are always going to be where you have a little bit of trouble. Um, because not only are you getting attacked from things that are on higher ground. Um, so, things on higher ground have a damage increase uh, against... Oh, we got a kill. We got a double kill there. Um, things on higher ground will have a damage increase against things on lower ground. They will also have better. Um, they'll also have a better view of what's going on. Uh, lost a few too many units here, but again, ramps do this, and of course, some, because the ramp was blocked, some of my units have gone wandering, which again is something that you're just going to have to get used to. But there's not really uh, too much left here, and the zerg base is really small. So, no real big issues. What the hell did they do to that command center? They infested it. Uh, since Jimmy's not here and can't see it, he misses his line. He'd actually say, whatever it is, it isn't natural. Burn it, boys. And in fact, it is natural because it's done by the Zerg. So, therefore, it is natural. But, as you can see, this is just going to be a burn down. There's... I'm replacing stuff one of you know, replacing stuff that I've equipped, but I've supplied block myself yawn and the uh, command center is burning to the ground. So that is the end of that and hopefully all is now well with this thing.
Receiving incoming transmission. Oh, hell. Marshal Reno, by destroying the vital Confederate installation, you and your men have violated standing colonial law. As of right now, you're all under arrest. I suggest you throw down your weapons and come peaceably. Are you out of your mind? If we hadn't burned that damn factory, this entire colony could have been overrun. Maybe if you hadn't taken your sweet time in getting here. Now, I asked you nice the first time, boy. I didn't come here to talk with you. Now throw down them weapons. Guess you wouldn't be a Confederate if you weren't a complete pain in the ass. Yep, that's pretty much the Confederacy in a nutshell. It's like, you have destroyed a vital Confederate in installation. Yeah, just forget the fact that it was infested and the Zerg were about to overrun the planet. But, you know, very sort of black and white morals going on. Anyway, guys, that's that. See you next time.